And that is why I'm never editing a flat earth meme into a client vid again. Hi, I'm Sam Angle and I've been editing for six years and freelancing for half that time. And let me tell you, I've learned some stuff. Reb Day made a video on her... Oh, sorry, there's a spec on my script. I thought it was a full stop. Reb Day made some videos on her role as a film producer and I thought, that's a good idea. I asked Reb Day if I could make something similar and she said, No. But I'm all for the honesty about the behind the scenes of YouTube, so I'm gonna do it anyway. Thank you. Thank you. I flocked to Twitter for questions to answer about what it's like being a freelance editor. And when I only got one, I went to Instagram instead. Quick housekeeping, I've learned a lot over the past three years of freelance work, but I'm not a master. I'm nowhere near 10,000 hours and I'm still learning new stuff every single day. I'm actually gonna start with some questions that nobody asked, but I thought might be asked in a why didn't you ask me this quick fire round. Number one, what software do you use to edit? I use Final Cut Pro for my own stuff and Premiere Pro for client vids. Number two, why do YouTubers hire editors? I don't know, because Editing is one of the most time consuming and for some least rewarding part of the creative process. It's quite easily outsourced, but also it can really strengthen your content to have an editor on board. It's another mind and creative input on a story or a bit of content, and that investment can really level up your overall workflow on YouTube. Number three, how long do you spend on edits? Usually it's anywhere between 10 to 28 hours. I think the fastest I've ever done is two hours and the longest is still in progress. Number four, any advice for someone getting into the freelance life? Nope. But I did get some great advice from John Aitken when I first started taking freelancing seriously, and that was to take 20% of your earnings and immediately put it into savings for tax purposes. Even if you don't think you're gonna come close to that tax threshold, because worst case scenario, you have money to give when they come asking for taxes, and best case scenario, you can give yourself a little tax rebate. Secondly, a quick way to figure out your day rate is to take the amount you wanna earn in a year and divide it by 100. That doesn't mean you're only gonna have 100 working days because some of these other days in the week are gonna go towards emailing and sorting clients and responding to all sorts of stuff, but that's a really good way to quickly get through that whole uh, what's your budget, what's your rate debate. What am I doing with my hands? Number five, how much do you charge? <laughs> do much for you, punk. All right, I think my coffee's almost worn off, so I'll go on to the real questions. What do you think is the most important aspect of an edit, e.g. style, story, or structure? Story, for sure. Story is king. All three are quite important because a story needs a structure, like a human needs a skeleton. Uh, preferably you can't see it on the surface, and otherwise you go all floopy. And style aids the telling of the story, and if it doesn't, then congratulations, you're in style of a substance town. <laughs> Why am I being such a loser? <laughs> Every good video has some kind of story behind it, whether it's the story of falling back in love with YouTube or the story of burnout or the story of questions to answer. I really love a non-film book called Storyworthy. It's one of my favorite books and something I'd like to dive in deeper to how it applies to film. How do you find the balance between what you want to do and what the creator wants? I think I've been quite fortunate in never really having that battle of creative minds, like two locked horns. It, we're fairly often on the same page Age, but if that situation ever does arrive, you've got to let the client win. They're paying you to do this. <laughs> the bottom line is it is your job to put aside any creative differences and make sure that the creator is happy. If it's one of my projects and when I'm working with someone, then I might be more firm to fight my corner and push for my vision. But when I'm working for someone with their brand and their specific style in mind, it's not really wise to throw too much of my scent in there. Otherwise, it's a bit like I'm peeing on their this metaphor doesn't work. <laughs> On a similar line, do you have a style for each client or do you use your own? It's sometimes a mix, but to be honest, it's mostly the former. I kind of like to keep my style to myself if I even have a style. I'd say very often there is a kind of style that the creator has in mind and I do my best to emulate that as much as possible. The more I edit for a particular person, the better I kind of get a feel for the way they want the cuts to go. Um, also, a lot of clients are YouTube based and therefore have a lot of stuff to watch through and understand the flow and get that feeling early on. Sometimes I feel I should try editing out the styles of other people as a sort of practice and challenge for myself. Like I edited like Peter McKinnon or L Mills or Dodie. There might be a viral series in that, I'm not sure. 
know very little about going viral. <laughs> What's the best and worst part of the job? Uh, best outweighs the worst for sure. Pros outweigh the cons. Best is the flexibility of hours and probably the fact I am constantly creating and exposed to creative people and creative mind and creative content. Worst is probably the flexibility of the hours or the fact that I'm editing quite a lot for other people which therefore makes it hard to edit for myself without spending hours and hours just staring at screen indoors. What's your process for using audio kiss? I'm a believer in treating visuals and audio the same so I normally just stick a LUT on my audio. That's actually only partially a joke because I normally put on a limiter. I found a really good template from Larry Jordan who is like the final cut Pro Messiah. Beyond that, I just make sure it doesn't go above six decibels or below 12 decibels on the green bar thingy. Unless there's like a creative reason or I just want to make people jump. Audio is just definitely something I need to learn more about, but every time I try and look at an EQ, it just gives me a mild headache. The most commonly asked question, how do you find or source work slash do you reach out to creators or do they react to you? Uh, how do you go about finding clients to edit for? It's the most commonly asked question but it's definitely one of the key ones. Some clients I've worked for have come through recommendations or word of mouth but the initial spark has very often happened through tweets or insta posts asking for people to apply as editors. A lot of creators are looking to outsource that editing work now so I've just been following a lot of creators I admire and whenever that tweet comes true, I am quick to shoot over my CV. It mostly results in not hearing anything back, um, much like most job applications these days, or at least it was when I was handing out my CV to shops in that retail work life. There are other places for work that I've not personally dabbled in, such as Indeed and Fiverr and Kahootify. I can't like recommend them because I've not used them, but it's always a good place to look. How to get started on a budget. It's a very good time to get started as an editor because there are just so many free or at least cheap softwares available now. DaVinci Resolve is free. That's better than the stuff I use. <laughs> There's also one that keeps getting advertised me. I don't know what it's called. It's got like children like doing the editing, do you know the one? Where it's like a child's like, I just edited my video for youtube.com. I'm editing my video with the War 9. I personally say if you're a Mac user to go for something like iMovie because it's fairly user friendly and has a lot in common with Final Cut Pro for when you want to upgrade. My partner's been editing for eight years now and she's only just made that jump from iMovie to Final Cut Pro and not in a mean way, but her videos haven't really even jumped up that much in production. For no, <laughs> come back, no, I, I, I'm, I like your video. I like I like some of your video. Ah! The important thing is not the software, but learning the editing thought process because that'll extend across whatever you use. How to cut a clip is software dependent, but when to cut a clip, that is universal. That being said, the only real way to learn editing is to just jump in and do it. To cut stuff up and learn the fundamentals through YouTube tutorials, that's what I did, and just tell some stories. Grab whatever software, grab some stock footage. Using stock footage. Or download some of your favorite film trailers and just get practicing, have a play. You can download my videos, whatever it takes to get going, because the important thing is to start. How many pre-finalized cuts do you send to the client before settling on a final picture lock? Typically the golden rule seems to be about three. That's one rough, one fine, and one final. Some clients ask for more changes beyond that and they dishonor me greatly. I joke because I don't really mind, but typically three seems to be the magic number. Some awesome clients do a bonus first draft, which they call the shame cut. And that's pretty much just the skeleton of the piece and it can be as rough and as awful as it needs to be just to get the general story across. Um, yeah, I really like that idea of a shame cut because it really helps me get rid of that perfectionism devil off my shoulder. Favourite editing moment in a film or a moment that is very edit reliant and is therefore amazing? A great question. Moments that are quite edit reliant I love probably would be like City of Gods opening or just any match cut. I'm a kind of a sucker for a match cut so like the Space Odyssey bone to spaceship shot. However, arguably any good edit is an edit you don't notice. It's something that helps you fully immerse into the piece without being taken out by a sudden cut or change. So with that mindset, there's a scene in The Master that is just insane. It sort of relies on the Kuleshov effect, which is where two combined shots cut together to give a different meaning to what one alone would. This is partly because of our mind's natural ability to try and create meaning and connections and stories around what we see and do. Here's the cut from The Master, and just a warning, there is some fruity language. You seem to know the answers to your questions. Why do you ask? I'm sorry you're unwilling to defend your beliefs in any kind of rational way. Oh, if, if, if you, if you, if, if you already know way. the answers to your questions, then why ask, pig fuck?
Oh, I do love it. It's a, it's a very slow scene that sees Lancaster Dodge going from controlling the room to completely losing everyone in it. That little glance away from an elder and her tiny little eye movement makes that line hit different. It also contrasts to her sly smile earlier. In the space of three minutes, he's lost her to his temper. It's literally just a single cut that does that, but the choice of going to her instead of the John Moore guy or our protagonist Whackin' Phoenix, it's so simple and powerful. How many nests do you dare fit inside a nest in Premiere? Um, I'm an absolute scoundrel when it comes to nests, or in Final Cut they're called compound clips. I think the most I've ever done is somewhere in the double figures. Clip within a clip within a clip within a clip. I definitely know that this bit in five years had at least four nests deep. I love it even though it feels like my computer's going to implode. Are there any styles of editing which you stay away from? Yes. Edits that are really, really heavy in memes. I love a good sprinkled meme in here. They're ace. They're, it's nice, but if it's like constantly cutting to that like wheezing laugh effect it, or like a meme every two seconds, it just feels unimaginative and kind of uninteresting to me. The beauty of memes are that they are references with a new take. If you're not doing that, then you're not doing it right. IMO. Do you approach editing differently when it is for yourself versus a client? Yeah, when it's for a client, I like to do selects and choose the best bits of B-roll and then also kind of highlight the interview segments I really want to include. Take all that and then put it into the timeline. When it's for my own projects, I put it off for eight months. <laughs> That's the that's the sound effect I don't like, by, by the way. But no, something I've adopted recently is I try and edit all my client stuff on Premiere Pro and all my personal stuff on Final Cut. It really helps have that little bit of separation so I don't feel like I'm constantly editing. Although really it's just a nice change of scenery. It sounds really sad when I say it out loud, but we're in the age of faking a commute from your bed to your desk. So it's what we can do in these, what's that phrase? Unprecedented, unprecedented times, baby. And finally, what is editing? So the serious answer that I got off Google, it's the assembly of visuals and audio to tell a story or convey a message. It's what makes every story more concise and every point more clear. Fun answer, it's what nerds do, Cool Kids live stream now. Cool, that was some A's for your cues. It's been requested a few times that I do an updated version of my entire filmmaking workflow. So from pre-production, production and post-production, the latter being what happens when the Royal Mail loses your post and has to forge the replacements. Let me know if you wanna see that. And if you enjoyed this video, you can check out this creativity q and I did when I was a child. Thanks very much. Da, 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 da. Just sort of like, cool. And that's the end. That's the end of the video. The video is over. Did I answer all the questions? I think I only didn't answer one, which was what's your favorite microphone from my sound recordist. And he knows. You know what my favorite microphone is, big boy.